Hi everyone, and welcome again to my audiovisual channel. I am Gabriella Handel. If you're new, I'm a draftsman and the host of this show, A Conversation About Art. During each episode, I look for the meaning of art and beauty through conversations with colleagues in different artistic fields. Today, I bring you episode 91, and I will have this conversation with the founding director of Western Gallery, George Irwin. If you'd like to support my channel, Liking, leaving a comment, and sharing this video is incredibly helpful, and so is subscribing. These three are immediate and have no additional cost to you. They are free. These are all quite helpful in keeping this podcast and my artistic work going. If you'd like to support my channel with money, you can do so by purchasing my drawings directly from my website, buy things I make on eBay, buy prints of my drawings, or you can leave me a tip. The links for all of these things will be in the show notes. Thank you very much for watching and or listening or reading because I have been adding subtitles and enjoy the episode. Okay, George Irwin, welcome to my podcast, The Conversation About Art. You are episode 91. Please tell our right. listeners and viewers who you are and what you do. Yeah, 91. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. I mean, um, okay, so yeah, I'll, I'll, um, I'm... You said my name, George Irwin. I, uh, I guess, founded and own, run, curate Western Gallery, which began as an online only a gal an online only gallery, and then has been morphing into the real world, and now is in a space, as you can see. Um, and I guess that's my uh, short byline for what I do in the art world. Okay. Uh, yeah, I, I just, I don't remember what I was looking at just now, just before talking to you about how the gallery, which I didn't realize when I uh, wrote to you at first, that it was online only at first. And then so then you were kind of like transitioning on your on your email. I don't know. The thing is that, that yeah, you're transitioning into a physical space and mm -hmm. um, like, yeah, had like an edifice. And um, why did you, why did you start online only? Um, well, it was something that I felt I could do. I, um, I started really like kind of, it's, it's sort of a long story. Um, as I'm sure you, you know, when you ask people like, how did you start, you know, making art? Sometimes yes. it's like, well, I just always did that. Or mm -hmm. I got into it by this very circuitous route. Um, I've always been creative. I grew up in an artistic family. Um, and after I went to college, I started playing music more and I had played uh wrote songs and sang songs uh in bands in Austin for a decade or so and then ended up moving to Nashville to write songs and pitch them for big recording artists and did that for a little bit with um not a ton of success but enough to where it was like it was exciting but ended up we ended up moving back to Texas um and when we moved back to Texas we ended up in Dallas where my family is and where I'm from. And so I didn't have access to all of my musician friends, either in Austin or Nashville and Dallas and Fort Worth is just kind of huge and spread out. It's hard to get together with people. Um, and so I started diving back into visual art. And the way I did that was um, just searching through like browsing online through the, like just the internet and then also an Instagram and posting artworks, like historical artworks that I found that I liked on Instagram. And, uh, you know, when I first started doing it, I wasn't sure if that was okay or not. Um, but I thought, you know, if somebody has a problem, then they'll let me know. Mm. And, um, and then, you know, over time, more and more people started to kind of just follow the, the Western Gallery account, which is just a random, it, I mean, it wasn't random because it, it was definitely like, historical western artist or mm. western art that i was i was looking at and mm. uh, and posting or art of the american west so like you know even like um thomas moran and sort of some of the like um i can't think of the name like the the school from new york um who were doing like the luminance and who traveled out west um if it was either like western in in subject or kind of like vibe that that counted for me um so that kind of stuff frederick remington um 
and then like the Taos School of Painters became really like something I, I fell in love with and is very influential to me. Um, and then like even like the Canadian group of seven started to catch my attention. Uh -huh. um, and I really sort of fell in love with this kind of like uh, modernism that had come across from Europe and then became something so American. Um, and so I was just posting all of these, all these images from, you know, probably around early 20th century. And then over time, like the, the people who would respond to what I had posted are contemporary Western artists. And so I started developing relationships with them and I would start just posting some of their work too. And, um, as the audience grew, I started to think about, well, this is kind of a nice surprise to be like, you know, in, in this new community and, um, my background professionally was a, a web designer and developer. I went to school for design and went straight into doing work for the internet. Um, and I just thought, well, it seems like obvious that I could make an online art gallery. Mm -hmm. And I sort of had this other, like when I was in Nashville, I got really exposed to kind of the way that um, music labels package and present artists. Right. And so I was able to translate some of that. Um, and incorporate that into the, the process as well. So so I, I did, and, and I just made a website and did an open call, and then it's kind of grown from there. Nice. Okay, it's so really, then... really fun. Okay, and so when was that, when you put out the first open call? It was, like, I think February 2020. Mm -hmm. Okay. So. Okay. Yeah, that's, that's, that's a cool progression of... Uh, like arriving to, you know, mm -hmm. the, the gallery, uh, the making. Was, yeah, go ahead. Sorry. No, I'm sorry. Sorry to interrupt. I was going to say, I think the first I looked at the first post I put on Instagram was like November of 2016. So it was like, you know, years later that that the gallery actually happened. Okay. So then, okay, okay. No, that's that's cool uh, that you that you mentioned it because then you started the Instagram account. You said in 2016, and then you put out the first open call for like the official quote gallery in 2020. Right. So that's four years of kind of like building, mm -hmm. building up to something that you didn't know at the time when you started it. Exactly. That then yeah. culminated in the gallery. That's really cool. Yeah. That's um, really cool. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I, I wanted to do it a little earlier, but you know, life happens and like we sure. had, like had a, a second baby and Oh, <laughs> congratulations. Like, yeah. Yeah. Thanks. And so yeah. it's like, well, yeah. Okay. Um, okay. So <clears throat> I am curious about because I mean, I know more than one person who is very interested in art, visual art, you know, painting and is has some degree of creativity or whatever, but for whatever reason, they end up being kind of assist, not assistants, that's not what I mean. Um, you know, they end up being either a gallerist or some kind of advisor or something like of the, the sort. Administrative business side of things? Kind or? of, yeah, kind of, yeah. So then why is it that you don't make art? yourself, you know, visual art, why don't you paint the, you know, go, you know, if, I mean, I went to Arizona recently and the landscape, it's just like, I understand why pe pe that has been painted for just forever because it's incredible. Um, but you know, it's like, so then why don't you yourself paint it? And then, and then I'd like it if you talked a little bit about maybe like what you consider to be either, you know, like, um, the different skill sets. I guess, you know, it's like, what does it take to be a gallery curator versus what do you think it takes to be a good artist? Like, I don't know, like a, like a comparative wow. little, little news yeah. there. Yeah. That's a great question. Well, um, when I first started like back again in like 2016, 2017, I was painting, mm -hmm. um, I or drawing and painting and I grew up drawing and painting and I took drawing classes like in my, as part of my design degree in college and um, got to do like a lot of like figure drawing and, mm -hmm. um, and then I took a painting class too, actually. And, um, I, I enjoy it, but I think that having worked in the internet for like 20 years, it's just takes too long <laughs> for me. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, and so I get, I think I get too frustrated trying to, um, trying to you know realize like what I'm imagining mm -hmm. through painting um or not too frustrated but I it's easier for me to like look at somebody else's work and say 
oh man, I like that. And I like it because of X, Y, and Z. And I think that it would be great for, you know, something um, and kind of articulate my thoughts about somebody else's work than it is for me to make my own and then do that mm -hmm. and then promote it. Mm -hmm. um, in a way, it's kind of like, this, this goes into your second question, which is um, it, you have to do all the marketing anyway when you're an artist, at mm -hmm. least at first. Mm -hmm. um, and so if I'm just gonna be doing that anyway, maybe I can help other people sell their work and serve this community that I, that I created. Um, and at the same time, like not be like stuck in my own very slow progression as an early stage artist. Mm. If that makes, does that make some sense? Yeah, yeah, sure. And does it, and does that answer the question? I don't, I don't know. I mean, as far as like differences between being the artist and being, I, I just think it's a different medium, honestly. Ah, uh, yeah. Interesting. Um, and it depends like, and I, I guess it's the same sort of thing with, uh, when, when you're an artist, you have to balance like, especially if you're doing it professionally, you have to balance like the uh, creative with the commercial. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And it's true with a gallery too. Like I, you know, my inspiration comes out as creative as far as like what I'm curating and like the idea of like a, a group show that I'm, I'm putting together um, or whatever, like I want my roster of artists to be. And um, versus you know, what do I know is going to sell tomorrow mm. and trying to figure out like, you know, I would love it if both of those things were true all the time, but yeah, yeah, um, for sure. it doesn't always work out like that. Yeah. Yeah. That's so interesting. And that makes a lot of sense because, you know, uh, um, I guess one of the, one of the reasons for which is so, for which is so interesting and exciting to have a gallery director type individual mm -hmm. like you on is just to kind of, just to learn more about it, because it's like a lot of times you know, I mean, I'm sure you know that there's a lot of a lot of us versus them in a way in all walks, every situation you can think of in life, yeah. right? So then, of course, that's not missing from artists who are like the just stereotypical underdogs in a way, like the artists, right? So it's like, oh, yeah. Yeah, you know, gallerists, they don't care. They just want to sell and all this stuff. And it's like, okay, some of them do, sure, but everyone wants to sell. It's like, don't be a hypocrite, mm -hmm. you know? But then, so it's like very interesting to hear that specifically about, because of course you have your own uh, things that you like, because for whatever reason, they like speak to you, you know, quote, whatever, this type of stuff. Um, but then there are things that you have seen with your eyes, how they sold just like that in your gallery, mm -hmm. you know, and, 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 you know, if you've had it for a while now, you can see you, you have for sure kind of gathered information on what is going to sell for, like, you know, that it's going to sell for sure, or at least very likely, Versus the things, you know, like compare that to the things that you like, and then maybe you can like kind of find a path where those two things converge, Yeah. you know, and that, and that probably kind of, I mean, I figure that it kind of uh, like polishes in a way, maybe like the people that you end up picking as like curating into your shows, you know, because, mm -hmm. because I'm sure that as you continue to gather information of what sells more, um, and the things that you like, you'll be able to kind of find more artists that will have both correct, both qualities incorporated into the work. But, but then that also happens to the artist because like, I mean, I remember in school, uh, just talking about like, yeah, but if I paint this, it's not going to sell. And then it's like, oh, but yeah. then if I only paint things that sell that I know are going to sell, it's like I'm going to sell then out. And sell stuff. out. Yeah, uh -huh, exactly. <laughs> so then it's like, uh, I just like that parallel being there because uh, just uh, well, first of all, it makes a lot of sense and it's refreshing and it's cool to have like that point in common between these two things that so often are seen as like uh, opposing teams in a way. I don't know, mm -hmm. sort of, you know, what I'm, okay. Yes. Go ahead. Sorry. What do you think about that? <laughs> oh yeah, that's okay. Um, I think, yeah, I mean, I, I don't know. I, I recently listened to a podcast. Um, this is, I listened to a podcast about a biography <laughs> <laughs> yeah. of Larry Gagosian and how he's uh -huh. like, you know, it was just like very much like only concerned with the sales. Like, like you know, he he thinks of himself as a shark and um, just you know whatever he can, however he can figure out how to how to sell. That's that's his go to, and he's like got the biggest, you know, the biggest gallery representation in the world. And I think that there is, a, you know, there's definitely a lot of um, 
value to that. And I think that he, in doing that, has like created some interesting opportunities and platforms for a lot of artists to get their work out that may not have been able to, you know, before he had made a name for himself. Mm. Um, so I don't, I don't want to like play down the fact that like running a gallery is selling art, right? Sure. But at the same time, I feel like the galleries do have a responsibility to um, present work that is not proven um, as far as like a, a marketable thing. And you mean like not as popular? Um, well, I mean, not, not, a, not, okay. So not, you know how you're saying, like, I get a, um, an idea after a while about, or like gallerists get an idea after a while about what will and what won't, what uh -huh. won't sell. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you come across, I come across artists all the time. I'm like, I have no idea. I love this, but I don't, don't know if it will sell or not. Yeah. Okay. I um, and it's like, do I take a chance on it, you know, or do I not? And trying to figure out like how to balance that with, you know, with being solvent as a business is really challenging. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, okay. Uh, all right. Let me take a note real quick. Okay. Um, yes. So, I mean, it's just that I, I guess, I mean, I didn't talk about it very much just now in my little rant there, but it's like, you know, the, the artist, the artist, as well as the gallerist, as well as the dealer who, you know, I hope I can get a dealer at some point too, uh, mm -hmm. on the podcast where, I mean, we're all a business. Uh, we're all, it's like the, yeah. A, maybe it's not strictly the point, but it kind of is the point to be able to derive some kind of money from this thing, which we enjoy doing. And I mean, I think it's, you know, up to the individual, like the owner of the gallery or the artist or the dealer to, I don't know. I mean, it's a decision one makes along the way, uh, I suppose, depending on how things happen, whether, whether one keeps going with the whim the creative whim or like the whim of one's taste or whether one decides to like follow the path of those images that sold. Cause I mean, I know mm -hmm. per, like personally, the people that graduated with me, um, that they started painting something in particular that was just very well liked. And I graduated in 2015. Okay. So basically since then they have been painting the same shit. <laughs> okay. And <laughs> yeah. it's like, um, so I would not like that. Okay. Um, I, I personally would not like that, but at the same time, like, I don't blame them for like mm -hmm. choosing to do that because, because there's also another thing. It's like, there's always a way to refresh a subject matter. Yeah. So I'm sure, you know, like in Western art, it's like, oh, the classic sunset, but it's like, you know, that might be more difficult because it's been done, it's been done so much, but there is absolutely a way to make a refreshing sunset painting. Of course there is. You know, mm -hmm. so then if that person that shows the path of just painting the same thing over again, because it was selling well, if they're able to refresh that for themselves so that it doesn't feel like their, you know, like their whim isn't doing what it's supposed to be doing, like their artistic creativity, their search is gone. Mm -hmm. And, you know, like it's, if they're, if they're, if they're able to make it so that it's still there, then that's great. And, and you get to still keep selling, you know? Yeah. So then that's cool. Um, okay. But so, okay. So I'm curious about what you said about deciding to take a risk on an image that you don't know if it's going to sell or not. So how then do you decide? It's like, what do you, what determines whether you decide to take the risk or you're like, ah, I don't know what, mm. you know, how, how do you like make that, that decision? That's a great question. Um, I, I think that in, hmm, it, I think honestly, like some, a, a lot of that is circumstantial. Mm. Like, it's just like, do I have like an opening in my program that would be right for this? Do I have, um, you know, am I going to like, if I fail with this, is it going to just sink me? Um, if, or, or can I like, you know, continue, can I put on another show after that if it doesn't sell anything? Um, or um, is it going to, does it, does it still like meet my general criteria for showing work? Um, even if it's, you know, really different than what I've shown to date. Um, that's a good question. Mm. I don't know. I think, you know, sometimes it, in, in, sometimes it comes down to like, even like just meeting the artist and kind of like mm -hmm. getting a better understanding of like what they're doing and 
is this some like why is this resonating with me and will it translate to other people um and uh yeah i, I feel like a lot of times it it a lot of times i feel like it's really worth it if you can do it mm. um it's really hard because you know I don't, I don't know how, I mean, I guess you said this, I'm the first like, you know, gallery person that you've had on, but like as gallery owners go, I don't, I don't know if I'm normal or not, but I feel like every month it's like, okay, am I about to be uh, done <laughs> Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or am I going to keep going at this? And maybe it's the same thing, you know, like with artists, like you just, you're like, well, I just have to keep doing it. Yeah. Another and parallel. One yeah. way or another. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I remember like I took a um, I took a risk with a really kind of progressive, quote unquote, Western artist uh, a couple years ago named Gio Richardson, and he just had his work was just really compelling to me, but I also could tell that like just from feedback that like a lot of the collectors that I serve were like I don't get it, it's too <laughs> contemporary, you know, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> and but I decided you know I'm, I'm, let's do it let's do it and. I felt like, especially after talking to him and like understanding like where he was coming from with it and how it was like, you know, it, it was a like real authentic artwork. Um, I felt really confident in, in putting it out there. And he did really, he did, he's done really well. Mm. Um, so that's good. I mean, there are other artists and I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna give you a name here, but I've, that I've felt like oh, I love their work and I find it really fascinating how they make it. And I feel like I can tell their story, but it just like, it goes out there and then it's just crickets. So mm. I still don't know exactly how to tell the difference, um, you know, but I guess you just kind of got to keep trying when you can. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, that's really, really interesting. And, you know, there's another parallel there, not just with the thing about, oh, I wonder if I'm gonna make it next month. Uh, mm -hmm. cause that's for sure applicable to artists as well. Yeah. Um, but the thing about, you know, when you really like something and you of course expect other people to like it because you yourself like it so much. And then, mm -hmm. you know, you post a thing on Instagram or something and it gets like, for example, like 10 likes versus the other thing yeah. that you liked, but maybe not as much got like 500 likes, you know? Mm -hmm. And it's like, yeah. see, that's really fascinating to me. Like, how does that work? Because I mean, I have several drawings and I'm just like, wow, I love the hell out of this thing. And it, I have continued to love it since I made it until now, even though it's been years. And I'm like, why do I still have this? It's like, why don't, why doesn't anyone else love this as much as I do that they want to live with it? You know, like, like I, cause I love mm -hmm. its company, this stuff, you know, this type of stuff. Yeah. Um, okay. I have one more question. Um, so now that you have the physical space, the physical gallery, mm -hmm. and, you know, besides paying for rent, how does it differ from having on, uh, the, everything online versus having it physically there? Well, it's, um, and do you have a, a preference? That's, Go ahead, sorry. that's a good question. Yeah. I mean, so. I've always wanted to have a physical, a physical gallery space, you know, mm -hmm. since I started, I was like, Oh, this seems like a great way for me to do this and like, have it be in the real world where people I can actually see the art <laughs> yeah, yeah. as opposed to just pictures of it. Um, but it's, it's interesting. Like I being all online, my audience is global yes, and a collector base is, is global and or national. Um, just, because that's, that's, you know, there was no, there were there was no proximity situation right. here. I'm recognizing that, um, local, you know, local artists and local collectors, it's a, it's a big, uh, important thing to have, mm -hmm. um, because, you know, I mean, just logistically getting in and returning work or shipping work, um, and delivering work, like uh, all of that is just way easier if it's, if it's, you know, drivable sure um, yeah and uh and you know for collectors they can come see the see the work in person so that is a that's a big shift for me because previous to now i've been you know very focused on the american north american west as a whole um whereas now it's like well 
it makes sense to have like a Texas focus with being in Texas. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, and then trying to figure out like, how does that work into my program to date and moving forward? Am I going to continue to have like wider ranging um, online programming that accompanies or goes parallel with the, the um, physical programming? And so it's, it's a fun, I mean, it's, it's definitely like a an interesting and fun challenge, but it, it's like it's a big challenge to figure out, and and it also has presented a situation where I find myself, oh wait, I've got almost like two jobs now where I have to do both <laughs> the digital side of things and the physical side of things, you know, mm -hmm. which as it includes hanging and yeah, yeah, yeah. all that, and you know, storing, the and walls, delivering, spackle. and yeah, patching, and yeah, all that, <laughs> uh, buying, you know, hors d'oeuvres and stuff, and. Yeah. Oh, for the openings, so, yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, I mean, it's it's kind of really different to do it physically than it is to do online only. Um, and you said earlier that you got the the gallery, the physical gallery in 2020, was that it? Um, no, that's that was the beginning of the, the online gallery. Ah, uh, okay, okay, okay. So then when did you get the yeah. physical gallery? So over the past, I guess, when was this fall of last year? 2022 ah, I, I did my first pop-up i did like just a pop-up for a weekend here um that, and i found i found uh this gallery that I'm, i now like am in um as part of like a partner situation with um online and started talking to these um the wonderful gallery owners that that had just moved in and not really fully opened yet mm -hmm. Um, about doing a pop-up and it worked out really well. And then we co-presented um, an artist solo show that following February. And then in April this year, I did another pop-up this time for a month. And then um, my family and I had moved down to, to Austin this summer. And so uh, they were like, well, why don't you just move in? And so, yeah. so now I am, I'm here, <laughs> okay, <laughs> which, is, okay, okay. which is amazing. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. So then, a, but like what about a year? Just over a year? Yeah, it's like a year, a year, and like three kind of major pop ups, um, and then, uh, yeah, and then moving into like a a legitimate space. Okay. Well, that's really cool, and I'm glad that you're. That I'm glad that you know you're doing that. Your business is Thank doing you. well, and kind of like bringing that. And especially the subject matter, and I guess uh, the previous question of uh, online versus physical was not the last question because I have another question. Uh, <laughs> why are you into this subject matter that you show in your gallery? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, and it's one that I don't know if I've ever really been able to fully answer. Um, it, well, I, actually, I think I, I know the answer, which is, it's, so it started when I was in Dallas, right? And and when I say Dallas, that's not entirely accurate. I was like in a suburb, like outside of Dallas. Um, and it was, it's just a very uninspiring landscape. Really? Yeah. And okay. so, I mean, just like, you know, like 80s or maybe not 80s anymore, but like 90s strip malls that had not been updated mm -hmm. and um, just not, not a very like, and just tons of like suburban housing, um, not the landscape is not inspiring and the urban area was not inspiring. Um, and so I found myself like, just, you know, thinking about like, what do I want to look at? And that's kind of how I got to doing the, the Western art on Instagram posting Western art on Instagram was I was like, I would love to be in the mountains or the desert. Mm -hmm. And so it's kind of escapist. Um, and yeah, so I think that that's that sort of like escapist idea is what started it. Okay. Um, and so since then it's, it's developed and I've kind of grown like a, uh, like additional appreciation, I think to a lot of the lifestyles that happen in the West and like just, you know, becoming more familiar with, with the subject and getting to know people in the community um, helps to reinforce the, the love of the subject. Yes, yes. Okay, yes, yes. That makes a lot of sense. But 
why was your why did your escapism lead you hmm. to basically your own country and not that far away really because it was still texas no because so it's like you know i mean and i don't think it's a bad thing or anything i'm just curious and i'm curious yeah. for the following reason because i'm from panama okay and mm -hmm. You know, I grew up listening. So look, language in, Span in Panama is Spanish, okay? Mm -hmm. I grew up listening to music in English and watching television in English. So like, when I come here, when, when you know, when I, you know, here and in other countries of like South America, it is completely bizarre to me that they will listen to music in their own language. I'm like, why would you do mm -hmm. that? You know, so, so then, <laughs> so then like, um, I don't, you know, I'm, I just, you know, why would that something local kind of call your attention versus like the Himalayas or something, you know, I hear so that. like, yeah. so like, because, and like, again, I mean, I don't think it's a bad thing. I'm just curious about what you think called you to that specifically. Cause like, I mean, it's not really that far away from where you were and, and, and I mean, it's beautiful and amazing. And like that whole, it's a iconic legends. Mm -hmm you know, the wild west and like the, yeah. the struggles, but it's so fulfilling and like the horses and the cows and farming. I mean, I have started following a bunch of like homesteading things because I want to do some of those yeah. things myself, you know, yeah. and it's like, wow, you know, milking cows. I mean, I don't know. Tell me, what do you think? <laughs> that's a great, uh, that's a, a good question. I mean, I think that I was just thinking about the Western landscape because it's something that I'm familiar enough with that you know, I can visualize it easily um, and I can understand it when I see it in a way that um, I guess, I guess where I understand it more than like within looking at something that I have never experienced personally before. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, and, and at the same time, it is far enough away. So it's not just like West Texas. It's like, you know, Idaho or mm -hmm. Montana or like the, Sierra Nevadas or something that's like it's too far away for me to get to without you know getting on a plane mm. um and I think that um and just kind of like you know the same thing you're talking about like wanting to go be out there myself but feeling like it's not a practical thing for me to do like I, I have a family um and then all my other like kind of extended family and friends are local here in Texas mm -hmm. and so it um you know, it's something that I, I want to be close to these people, but I still love this other landscape. And uh, anyway, that's part of the reason we moved back to Austin is because there's like, it's, it's prettier. Yes. Yes. Okay. <laughs> but um, yeah, but I don't know. We were talking about moving to Santa Fe or Taos or Denver or something like that for a long time as well. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Uh, all right. So uh, Mr. Irwin, what is art in your opinion? <laughs> Um, nobody calls me that. Uh, sorry, I don't mean to laugh, but no, no, it, makes, okay. <laughs> it, makes per it makes perfect sense. Um, <laughs> can you ask me the question again? Sorry. Yes. What is art in your opinion? What is art? Art to me is a physical expression of an authentic feeling or thought. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. And especially if it's an expression that is um, somehow communicated to another person. Okay, so so it has to be physical. It um, has, uh -huh, go ahead, as a as a, I think as opposed to like in your just in, inside your brain, yes. Right. Yeah. Okay. And. Um, I'm just like reviewing what you said to see if yeah. to, to make sure that I understand. Um, and you said, you said, um, authentic expression also, and also communication. So, I mean that it, meaning that it has to be communicated. I feel Commun like communicable. Right. I feel like, um, I feel like that's an important part of the equation for, for art, um, is for it to be appreciated somehow. I guess if you, create something and continue to appreciate yourself that that's that can be a form of art but I feel like it's like I feel like it works best 
when it's between you know two or more people mm -hmm. um okay okay um okay so i like those three characteristics as uh, as the as a definition or the definition of art the physical part i particularly like because it has been mentioned in previous episodes about how the work of art is like the resulting it's it's like the object itself is the result of uh. like a series of um well really everything i mean you know you could be it could be argued and i like that a lot that the resulting art object is the result of everything that happened before it mm -hmm. uh in a way so like you know if, if if i'm if i'm going through a super shitty time but i'm still making a work of art um then that work that object of art is kind of a result of all those shitty circumstances that i was going through uh, which sure. is cool because it's kind of like leftover physical evidence of something and like yeah. I really like that idea, uh, you know, especially if I think about that and and I'm thinking about like uh, Michelangelo's paintings that I saw in the Met or something. Uh, that's yeah. really cool. Um, and okay, so then I am I'm kind I'm I'm like intrigued by by you specifically having said legitimate feeling because it's it it um, or authentic feeling i authentic, guess right? yeah you use yeah, authentic yeah. yes yes um because it talks about the i don't know i guess kind of like the whim that we were talking about earlier when you're curating your work you know when an artist is making their work so whether they're making it whether the person is making the work just to call attention just to be edgy just to mm -hmm. be controversial versus versus the work having kind of like the impetus of curiosity and searching for something or wanting to study something. Yeah, I think yeah, it's so, about truth. Yeah. And that's, I mean, I think that there's a lot of times when people are like being edgy or controversial, controversial on purpose, I feel like there can be truth in that too. Sure. But there has to be like that connection. Mm. Um, it has to come from like, uh, it has to come from, in, you know, like, I feel like it has to come from like your heart. And then your brain processes that, and then it comes out as you know whatever it whatever it is. But um, as long as you're not being like disingenuous, then it should count. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, <laughs> mm -hmm. You know, it's it, yeah. That part in particular is interesting because I've been thinking and kind of struggling, uh, wrestling. I don't know with um, something that I heard Camille Paglia say this. Um, commentator artist lady mm -hmm. um who said that art is not the servant of any ideology which i really really liked her saying mm -hmm. that um but you know of course there's a lot of great work from the past who that uh that the work was absolutely charged with some kind of political cause like you know masonia's is napoleonic type stuff like that's obviously political Mm -hmm. Right, because he obviously supported that or something. Sure, but yeah. but I think the complement to that is kind of what we're talking about with the legitimacy, because I think legitimacy is something that also makes a work of art good visually, hmm. and I think, or you know, helps to make at least helps make a work of art good, like good quality visual image. And I think, and I think when a work of art is visually good, and this was like kind of like corroborated recently because it's visual work. It has to stand on its own visually. It's like, because the first thing that you get is the visual, it's like the viewer can't rely on some background story in order for the thing to be good or in order for things to be appreciated. So it has to be good visually. So then it's like the work can have all the loaded, whatever you want, uh, the intent of the artist, whatever the artist meant, but it has to be well-made in order for it to kind of like transcend that will whatever political thing because it obviously can't rely on the political thing because it's like I don't care about the uh, Napoleonic Wars I don't give a single shit about them okay and it's like but I still love Masonier's work because he was so obviously good at it <laughs> you know right at making yeah. these depictions so like then there's this like uh kind of like 
you know, arguably, and that's kind of what I'm leaning towards lately, that the real value of a work of a visual work of art is the quality of the image. It's like, is, is this going to be loved as much 200 years from now where whatever's happening, whatever circumstances are happening now, are happening are completely irrelevant to those people in the future. Then that mm -hmm. is, it's like, that is why we still love Leonardo, you know, mm -hmm. and his work. You see what I'm saying? What do you think about that? I do. I do. Um, I, well, that's one of like, I'm trying to think of like what my, what my criteria is when I look at, look at artwork that I want to show. And one yeah. of them is absolutely like, it has to have like, um, great aesthetics and craft. Um, and so maybe that's what you're talking about. Like when, like just visual quality, like it has to have, like, you want to see something that, you know, you like to look at. And I think what that is about though, is like, is a piece being able to be received by another person, like to complete that communication. Like, mm. I don't, you know, you can have all the right reasons for making something and, or like, you know, all fine reasons for making something and showing it to me. But if I don't want to look at it, then right. it's not, I'm not going to engage with it or, or with you or any of your ideas. Um, so I feel like that's absolutely like a huge component of it. Um, but I feel like it, you know, the more, the more kind of like good definitions or reasons that people like to, um, that people like to think about art that you can have in one piece, the more likely it is to be a great work. So like, if you have like the, like the, just like amazing visual quality, but you also have a really strong concept mm -hmm. and it's also true to the story of the artists and comes from, you know, you know, their, their truth, like that, that has the makings of a really strong piece. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. And uh, I'm curious about the communication part that you said that you also mentioned that's part of your definition of art. Um, and I suppose it kind of ties in with what we're talking about uh, yeah. uh, just now with the, um, the visual and the aesthetics yes. part. Yeah. Um, because would you say that the communication aspect of a work of art, I mean, is that the same as understanding or, I mean, so do you think that in order mm. for a person to be able to enjoy a work of art, they strictly have to understand what the artist was trying to say, or do you think that kind of more like what I was trying to say that what the artist meant or intended is kind of irrelevant in a way if the work of art is really good and the person can still appreciate and enjoy the work of art and like they still want the work's company it's like mm -hmm. yeah what do, you, what do you think about that yeah i mean i feel like the um so that's that's a good point i think when i say communication as far as like um as being a requirement for like for art to be complete i i think that it doesn't have to be like a direct like I think this, I put it on paper and now you think this, mm -hmm. you know, it, I feel like as long as it's, it's um, able to be experienced by other people and they can take from it, whatever they want, then that, that counts. Okay. Yes. I like that a and, lot. Yes. Go ahead. And that does bring it back to like what you're talking about. I mean, if you, <laughs> if you do have such a strong uh, quality to your work that is compelling to people, you know, to look at, you know, if you don't, if it's if it's just all about like the form and the the aesthetics then and it, but it it stirs something in people then cool yes yes okay yeah i like that a lot yeah because you know what else um regarding that whole thing about so first of all i uh re, um all right give me a second <laughs> about the whole understanding the artist's intent um i i personally don't care for the work you know, that isn't quote traditional. It's like, oh, a break on a pedestal. And then you need like a plaque to get right. what the artist meant. It's like, to me, <laughs> that is a problem. Okay. Yeah. That is flawed. So then, so then, but when we're talking about quote traditional types of like paintings and drawings and sculpture that was sculpted, not a brick, um, mm -hmm. the visual, so like for the artist to try to get their intent across, 
if they want everybody to see the same thing, it's like, there's this problem of everyone's visual language being different because it's like the audience, mm -hmm. it's like you were saying, you know, like if you have, if you have like a global audience, it's like the visual language are, you know, your visual language that you're like, uh, you know, you're surrounded, you're in Texas, it's completely mm -hmm. different from like the Mongolia visual language. So then it's like, there's yeah. no way that a guy from Texas is going to get the Mongolian guy to be able to understand the same thing in the work. So then, but then it has to be possible for the Mongolian guy to be able to still enjoy the work. So like, that's when aesthetics kind of becomes like good artwork kind of becomes a universal language because they both like it. They can still both like it. You, you see what I'm saying? What do you, what do you think about that? I do. Um, yeah, I mean, I think that there, so I think that there's like the idea of like universal truths mm. and uh, maybe more like specific local, local truths. I don't know, but like, um, in, in aesthetics, I feel like would be, I feel like this, I, I don't have the philosophical background to go far enough into this, but like, I feel like, you know, like somebody in Mongolia might have a different set of aesthetic preferences than I do just sure. based on what their experiences have been. Um, but there are sort of like universal things like um, like the golden ratio and mm. stuff like that. I feel like maybe translate to everybody or maybe it's just Western society and, and not, you know, not Mountain West, but like Western hemisphere society. Yeah. Um, and I don't, I don't know, that's a, that's a really interesting interesting thing to think about. Um, for me to think about that, I, I kind of think about music and how there are all kinds of, I mean, in this, you know, obviously true of art too, there are all kinds of like kind of genres and subgenres and sub sub genres and weird, like, you know, there's a band that only five people ever listen to in, <laughs> yeah. um, you know, like a basement in Queens or something, but it's like the world to those five people. Mm. But for them to get somebody else to like it, it may not happen. Yeah. Um, unless there are certain elements in it that um, are like more, you know, pop, like yeah. popular. What is, what translates to a large number of people? And, you know, I think sometimes it's, it's a, sometimes people, sometimes artists try to avoid what's popular mm -hmm. because they think that's being, you know, a sellout kind of situation. Mm -hmm. um, and I feel like that, you know, if you're too, if you try to do that too much, you're probably shooting yourself in the foot. Yeah. Other artists, I feel like, you know, just goes too, too straight at it and it it's, feels fake. And maybe it's that balance again of like, maybe commercial is what's popular and vice versa. And so like balancing, you know, what, what you're like, you, you feel like the public is going to understand and yeah, balancing that with um, what you are trying to bring to it personally. I don't know, like, um, I think I, I, I might've gone off on a, a tangent there, but I feel, I, I don't know. I feel like there's there's a way for people to I don't know, harness like what, what is the popular thing? Mm. That's not, that's not what I'm trying to say. What I'm trying to say is, I don't know. And I, <laughs> that's a great question. That's a really hard thing to, to, uh, to think about. Mm. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Yeah. The question of, um, universal visual language is difficult, but, uh, to what you were saying about the, um, the golden ratio, I mean, that's a nature thing. That's not a Western thing because it's all over right. nature. So, so it's very it's likely that it's, I think it's very yeah. likely that worldwide, it's like, it doesn't take, I mean, you don't have to be a mathematician to notice that there's certain proportions, that there's nature proportions. And of course there's nature everywhere. True. Um, so that's cool. Cause that's kind of a universal language, a universal yeah. visual language right there, which is pretty cool. Um, very true. Okay. But also yes. like in, in, I know in like a lot of Asian cultures, like there's like a symmetry thing, Yeah. Uh -huh. you know, yeah. and that you know, that maybe that is a heavier influence uh, for them that then changes the balance of like how much they would naturally 
be inclined to like golden ratios. I don't know. <laughs> I don't really yeah, know. No, no, that's of course that's perfectly. Yeah, sure. Of course that's perfectly possible. Okay. Uh, speaking of aesthetics, Mr. Irwin, what is beauty in your opinion? Oh man. Hmm. I, I don't know. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I don't, what is beauty? Um, I wish, I don't know how to answer that. And I, I mean, it's not like I don't want to answer it. Um, I would love to, but I mean, maybe it's, maybe it's nature. Maybe it's, I don't know. Maybe that's, that's all I come back to probably is like, in for me, it's, it's like the, uh, Western landscape. Mm -hmm, <laughs> I don't know. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. No, but I, I mean, I think that's great. I like that a lot. Um, but I, I also love things like, you know, like a ju juxtaposition of like hot pink and like brown or something, you know, like something that, and, 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 or like metal. I don't, I don't know. I feel like there are things that, that are very incongruous that when put together can be beautiful. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if it, if it has to do with nature at all. So I don't, I don't know. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yes, but you know, like speaking of contrasting things or things that seem as though they don't go together, there's, I think there's definitely something to be said about the tension between certain things. Yeah. Bringing maybe it's a harmony. Yeah, yeah. Bringing, you know, something about the relationship between them or how they contrast with each other or like finding parallels between the two things, even though they appear as though they're contrasting or opposites. Mm -hmm. um that is rather satisfying actually i am reading uh, an art history book by paul johnson it's called new art history and i got to the mm -hmm. part about egyptians and he's talking and he talks about how i mean i haven't further looked into this to see if he is correct in asserting that the egyptians were the first the first people to kind of make a set of pro human proportions mm -hmm. uh like again i haven't corroborated that so i don't know that for sure but I mean, that's cool because they're Egyptians are, yeah. Egyptians are old. Uh, uh, Egyptian art is old. Um, and so he talks about this contrast between every single human being different, even in groups where there's a lot of commonality. Because even if you're talking about a group of people, everyone has different features. Right. right? Yeah. Um, so everyone is different, but then contrast and contrasting with the reliability of proportions. Yes, because all humans have the same proportions. Mm -hmm. And it's like, you know, that's kind of what you're talking about in a way, because those are contrasting things. It's like you're talking about this individuation versus then finding something similar, mm -hmm. finding a similarity in every single individual. And that's really cool. Like that gives me goosebumps. It's like yeah. such a it's such a unifying thing, you know, because I don't know, it's like a great unifier. Well, it's like, it's like satisfying on like both fronts. Like, you, you know, like everybody wants to be an individual, but at the same time, everybody wants to belong. Yeah. 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 And so yes. it's like both of those things and it's, uh, yeah. And so I guess, I don't know, they're, they're like opposing and, and not, I don't know. Yeah. 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 You know, it's, it's kind of like the yin yang, uh, mm -hmm. speaking of, you know, Eastern quote type things, you right, know, that, yeah. and the symmetry thing that you were talking about, because it's like, um, you know, kind of like the main thing, I guess, I suppose it's that the, the yin opposes the yang, but at the same time, yin, each one has a little bit of the other one. And it's like, mm -hmm. they're not that different in a way, you know, because they still have things in common. Right. Yeah, I find that I find that so very calming and soothing and uh, yeah, soothing, I think is the better word of those two, because I mean, I'm sure you've noticed that it's so in vogue to just divide try to divide right. and find differences or like the us against them that I was talking about a second ago. And it's like, you know, there's, we have way more in common than everyone mm -hmm. thinks. Uh, and I like that a lot. Um, and I also really quite like what you said about nature because it, it, I mean, it has come up in previous episodes that nature is, you know, carries our aesthetic code basically. Mm -hmm. Um, and I like that a lot and I'm very much inclined to agree with that. So like, nature as like teaching us what is beautiful and like then 
beauty being an ideal that we can aspire to, to, you know, make work, uh, artwork that kind of reaches for that ideal. Or like, you know, when you create, when you curate work for your, for your gallery, that is work that kind of indeed tries to reach for that ideal or like a, a, a curation that pays proper tribute to that ideal, you know, you know, what, what do you think about that? That nature part? Yeah, I would love to do that. That's, that sounds impossible, but also kind of fantastic. Um, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I think about, I, I don't know if this is going to answer what you're asking exactly, but like, I think about, I just looked up here at, at, um, at this particular painting here. I'm going to, I don't know how often this happens on your podcast, but it's fine. Yeah, my do camera it. around. Uh, there it is. Whoops. Okay. So, like this particular painting is uh, by the artist Thomas Flynn, mm -hmm. and I don't actually represent him. This is part of the my partner's gallery, but um, it's like his perception of nature, and like a like. Mm, you know, it's a, it's an expression of what he perceived as beautiful in nature and his experience with it. Mm -hmm. And it comes across and it's not as like, you know, uh, glorious or, um, uh, I don't know, it's not like the same as like looking out over a canyon or looking at like the depth of this jungle or whatever where he was. Um, but it, you know, it's it's a piece of it. And mm -hmm. so maybe even just like a piece of, of what is, I don't know, is natural and, and honest, um, can be, uh, what are we talking about? Can be beautiful, can be, um, art. Yes. And, and worth paying attention to. Mm. Um, yeah, I don't know. Okay. Did that, well, did that answer your question at all? Or was that just, <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, that was, that was great. Um, okay. yeah, that was, um, that was, yes. Thank you. Yeah. For, thank you for, for showing that and, and musing a little bit about it, uh, regarding the question of what is beauty. Um, okay. So yes. Oh, you, you just okay. saw me thinking, um, <laughs> well, I, th I thought you wanted to add something. So no, uh, Mr. Oren, we've broken the 55 minute mark of our conversation here. So All right. um, if you would like to, uh, I don't know if you want to add, I'm just going to start clo to close it out. I don't know if you want to sure. add anything. Where, where, uh, where are you located? Do you have any shows coming up? Is there anything you're excited about? Um, yeah. Your Instagram handle, uh, website, all of this. Awesome. Uh, thanks, Gabriela. Um, Whatever you want to plug, yes. When, okay, when do you think this will be, when will it was published? This is going to be published next, uh, on Monday. Okay. All right. Well, in that case, we'll have just finished up the West Austin Studio Tour here in Austin, um, which is great. It's a, um, the Austin Studio Tours are like three weekends uh, in November where like the whole town comes out and goes and visits uh, artist studios and galleries all around the city. Um, nice. And I had not experienced it in a very long time and never as like a gallery owner before, but this past weekend was fantastic. And we had, you know, steady traffic through all, all day, like all different kinds of people, collectors, um, and, you know, non, a lot, a lot, a lot of non-collectors who were just coming out and like getting a feel for what's, you know, what's out there. It was really mm -hmm. cool. Um, as far as what's coming up, my program for the next coming year is, pretty in development. So I'm not going to go into that, I guess it, um, I didn't know whether or not I was going to be in a gallery this year. So it's, it's sure. still kind of coming together. Um, but I'll be featuring some, some new artists. Um, I'm reworking kind of my artist roster a little bit and we'll have some announcements about that in the new year. Um, the fifth anniversary of my first show I, ho I hosted the group show, um, New Western Talent will be, uh, the call will open up in probably late January. Okay. Um, and I'm gonna do some fun stuff with that this year. Uh, that's just historically an online show and I think it will still be mostly online, but we might do some in-person stuff just because I can. Um, 
and I don't know, Instagram, Western Gallery, all one word. Okay. Browser, internet is western.gallery. And um, in Austin, I'm on uh, Thornton Road, which is down by Old Torf and Lamar. Okay. Just give me a call or send me an email and love to show you work in person. Okay, lovely. Okay. Awesome. Yes. Okay. So cool. the, uh, I'm going to start to close the uh, finish. I'm going to finish up the show here, uh, George. Thank you very much for joining me. Uh, thank you for your time, Absolutely. your words and your thoughts. Thank you everyone for joining us. Feel free to let George and I know what you think of this conversation in the comments and make sure to visit his gallery indeed, or, you know, on the internet, on Instagram or physically and say hello and everything. I encourage you to like this video and share it with any and all pertinent individuals as it helps the channel and this way more people can listen to these interviews. Finally, I invite you to subscribe to my audiovisual channel because I have more conversations scheduled. If you want to support George, myself, this podcast or all three, the links will be in the show notes. So thank you everyone and see you next time. Bye. Bye.